Well, hello there. It's Mr. K again, the mediocre painter, and I've been miniature painting oh, for 30 something odd years, predominantly playing 40k and the like from Games Workshop and a bunch of other stuff over the time. And I've made lots of mistakes in this hobby, and I'm hoping that I can pass on some of my money so basically I've made the mistakes so you don't have to. So today what I'm going to talk about is tools. What tools you need to actually get into the miniature side of things in the wargaming hobby. And trying to do it on a budget so you don't have to spend an awful lot of money in order to be able to successfully construct your first miniatures and actually get to the point where you'll start painting them. Today I'm really going to focus on the tool side of things rather than the painting side of things. I will do an episode after this one about the painting side of things in terms of what paints should you buy and a bit of history around uh, paints and things like that and also how you look at a model to think about how you would actually go about painting it. There are lots of great painting videos on the internet about how you actually do it. I kind of like to focus a bit more on the methodology and things like that because I think that can actually help you get along with miniature painting when you first start. So no doubt when you're actually interested in getting into this hobby for the first time, you'll have bought a set, maybe you bought a first strike, maybe you bought Shade Spire, or in the United States, maybe you bought Blitzball. And you've got a set of miniatures that you need to cut off sprues like this. And if you look in the instructions, Games Workshop will recommend that you buy yourself a pair of snips to get this stuff off. And I imagine a lot of you are thinking, well, actually, can I push this stuff off? No. Absolutely not. Do not push it off. You will snap it and you will break it. And I imagine an awful, another group of people is actually thinking, well, you know, can I not just cut it off with my pen knife or something like that? Or maybe the knife I've got in my toolbox, which is more often than not something like this. A Stanley knife, a retractable Stanley knife. If you are going to use a knife to cut this stuff off sprues, then do make sure you have like a piece of wood or something laying around to actually do it on. You can get free samples of shelving and things and also engineered wood flooring um, from floor companies online delivered to your house for free and actually really, really handy to have around for the miniature hobby because you've got something to put in and cut into. So just to give you an idea of why you don't want to be using a knife to get minis or sprues, it actually does take a little time to cut through the bits on the, on the sprue when you use a knife and you can slip and cut yourself and things like that. So it's a much better idea to buy yourself a pair of snips. The other reason why you want a pair of snips as well is if you are using a knife and you're pressing it in you may actually damage the mini because the, the, the mini is going to bending on the other side you may actually snap a bit off. The advantage of using snips is you can just snip it off with it standing directly like that in front of you so you're not actually putting any pressure on the components at all. Now if you buy a pair of snips from the Lights Games Workshop or in your Wargaming Hobby Store they are quite pricey but really to be honest if you look in your toolbox you may find something like this which is a pair of electrical snips and these aren't too bad they'll do the job quite well. They're pretty good. He says, as he's not able to actually cut the miniature off. There you go. And as you can see, they're quite good, but they're not that good. You can find a pair of the thin versions like these on eBay. These are electrical snips, and these are about three pounds. And these are great. They're absolutely perfect for cutting these kinds of miniatures off. And you can see that, you know, you can spend almost no time at all cutting miniature of a spray. So these these kinds of snips will save you a bunch of time when it comes to taking stuff off sprues and will also be nice and accurate too so you don't end up snipping something you're not supposed to. Now once you've actually got it off the sprue you're going to need to probably cut the little bits off with a knife. So this is where you're actually going to need a knife. Now you can try and do that with something as big as this and hefty as this but it's not really got the precision for you and this is something you probably already got in your toolbox. 
What you probably also got in your toolbox is something like this, which is a snap knife. These are very common in people's toolboxes. And actually, these aren't bad at all for this kind of activity because they got a nice lengthy blade. They can actually be quite nice to get around minis and take flashing off and mold lines and things like that. And they can give you a reasonable amount of control too. These are cheap. You know, they're about a pound or something like that. And, you know, you can replace the blade, snap the blades off to keep the blade true and things like that. They really aren't bad at all. But they probably don't have the, the weight to them that you're really going to need in order to be able to do things actually properly. So if you are going to acquire a new knife, maybe this is not the one you should be looking for. Now, most miniature people will recommend what is commonly referred to as an X-Acto knife, which is actually a brand name. But if you search on eBay, they're called scalpel tools, and these are about three pounds. Everything seems to be about three pounds, isn't it weird? So these are about three pounds, and you can get replacement blades like this. And you can see this is basically just like a scalpel. It's got a metal half, so it's got a bit of weight to it. So it's good for taking big stuff off. You can use it to take mold lines out. Um, it's a very, very good knife. The only problem with this is, as you can see, it's fairly lethal. And I've actually got scars on my hands from using the Exactos over the years. And in recently, I've actually moved away from using an Exacto knife and actually gone more down the road of this kind of knife. So this knife is called a retractable knife. It's got a small blade, it's made of metal, and you can push it in and it will retract, which is actually quite useful if you're ever transporting your minis around in like a little box or whatever, and you've got a little transport kit or something like that, which I'll talk about in another video probably one day. This I really like because it's got a bit of weight to it because it's metal, so it's good for cutting off the big stuff. It's got nice small a small blade that I can still control and get close to, and it's got a really nice feel to it. So actually, I find recently I've been using these. These are about three pounds for two in you know your local bargain store like B and M Bargains or Pound Stretcher or somewhere like that. And I really like these kinds of knives, and I think they're really good for when you first start because they're nowhere near as intimidating as the scalpel style exacto knife. And you know, added an advantage, you know, that they fold up and they're a bit and they're nice and neat and tidy. So I think I would recommend actually, if you're going to have a knife, something like this is ideal when you first start. Eventually, you will graduate towards having a selection of knives, no doubt, as you get into this hobby. So once you've like taken off those bits off, you'll start to mount the stuff together. If it's a push fit mini, you'll start to push the, the stuff together and things like that. And you will find you need to get rid of mold lines and things like that. And so for that, you're going to need some files. So this is basically a, a, a nail file, something like that. You probably want a selection of them in different sizes. Just go to your local bargain store again and peruse the beauty section and pick up a selection of nail files and they'll do the job just nice for you. These are absolutely fantastic on plastic miniatures. Metal miniatures you may find you need something with a bit more heft to it. So if you can find them, you can also find metal nail files like this and often you'll see these things on pen knives as well and things. These aren't very expensive again, they're about a pound or so. And these are actually, I find, really good for metal minis and because they've got a bit more to them. And because they're metal, you get a different type of filing. It's a bit more sturdy. So I recommend that you have like your traditional sort of nail files for your nails and a metal one as well is a really good idea. Having some sandpaper around is a very good idea, fine sandpaper as well. You will find you'll probably need that from time to time. And if you come across some particularly difficult stuff, usually with metal miniatures, you may find you need to invest in like a metal nail file like this. But I would not recommend you buy that straight away, you probably don't really need it. Because most of the time you're probably buying plastic stuff. So, 
One of these, one of these, will do you just fine. Now, you've got to the point where you've pushed the miniature together and you've gone, hmm, actually, there's bits falling off it. Yes, push fit miniatures aren't all perfect. They do pop off and things like that. And really, you are going to need to glue the stuff together. Now, there are lots of different types of super glue that you can use to do this. And super glue is pretty decent all rounder glue wise. It's great for plastic miniatures, great for metal miniatures. Super glue can be expensive. Now you can get fancier super glue these days, which is gel super glue and things like that. And gel super glue is great for miniatures because basically you can pop it in the right place and you know it won't move. Because super glue has a tendency to move around and then you'll basically get like white marks and just more stuff that you have to clean up. However, if you're careful and smart, there's no reason why you can't just buy the cheap stuff. So if you go to your local bargain store, you can buy like 10 three gram bottles of super glue for like £2.50. This stuff will serve you just fine. And there's a big advantage here as well in the fact that these are small and you're only using one at a time because blue does go off, it oxidizes and it will go off and loses its ability to stick, but also it goes hard. So actually having a bunch of them that's really cheap and like end up being 25p each or thereabouts, then you, you know you don't care so much about it so you can use it liberally uh, on just about everything now what you don't want to do though is actually use it liberally on miniatures because then you've got more stuff to clean up so when you're actually putting a miniature together don't just take the glue and just go bonk onto the miniature say when you're doing an arm or something don't just take the glue and just go bang you will put too much on and you will cause a bit of a mess. So what you really need is something to use to actually put that on. And so your best bet is to pour it out into a piece of plastic. Here's basically a you know, plastic lid of something which I've actually used as a dry palette. Pour it out, pour a little bit out, and then use something like a toothpick, or even in this case, actually a piece of linguine or spaghetti to actually dip that into the super glue, dip it onto the model and push the stuff together. And that way you get the glue where exactly where you need it and exactly the right amount. You don't need very much in order for it to stick properly, especially with plastic miniatures. And you won't get overrun and oxidation and things like that to worry about. And life is good. So once you've stuck it all together and assembled it, you are then going to need to fill in some gaps and holes. So if we look at like a traditional sort of slot base miniature like this Steyr Avenger here, you will see that there's going to be gaps in the slot base at the bottom and you're going to need to fill those gaps in with something. In the miniature world, people use something called green scuff, which is a tight, and you can buy that and maybe about that much. It's a polymer and there's two components to it that you mix together. It turns green and you can mould it it's there and it stays mouldable for a little while and it goes hard. That is fairly expensive over the long run and over time and so if you want to do this on a budget and on the cheap I recommend that you use good old plasticine. And you can find that in most kids store. In the US, I think it's called modeling clay. And you can use plasticine. It's pretty good. It's perfect for filling holes in on bases. And it ain't too bad either at doing things like, you know, gaps in joints on arms and things like that. Now, the thing is about this stuff is it doesn't have any sticking properties itself. So it can't stick stuff together. It's just going to fill the gaps. And also, it doesn't go hard. Well, it will go hard over a very, very long period of time. But it doesn't go hard. So you are going to need to put super glue over the top of it to make it go hard and then you just paint over it. That is the cheapest way you can fill gaps and holes in models, basically. And I've been doing it that way for a very, very long time. I do, admittedly, predominantly use this for basing and things like that, rather than not all um, arms and things like that. I tend to use 
more specialist stuff on the arms and things like that. So another type of filler that you'll hear, you'll no doubt hear in the modelling community is milliput. So milliput is basically a similar kind of polymer to green stuff. It's used by plumbers and basically you mix the two compounds together, you have it wet, it goes nice and smooth and after a, a few hours it goes hard and you can sand it and everything and things like that. It's got a lot of very similar properties to green stuff though you probably can't manufacture bits out of this like you can with green stuff. It's really you know good for filling and things like that. But what Milliput is good at is sticking stuff together. Milliput's really good at that and Milliput will also actually dry under underwater. It's used to fix pipes and so it actually works underwater and things like that. So it's actually a good idea to have some milliput knocking around your house and things like that. You never know when you might actually need it. It lasts a long time. This is about three pounds and this is the traditional sort of yellow grey stuff. You can get different colours. But I would recommend when you first start to avoid milliput and green stuff and basically give things a go with cheap and cheerful plasticine really. Um, this plasticine I stole from my three-year-old daughter. It was a fairly big ball uh, a year or so ago, and it lasts a long time. You don't need very much, and it's cheap. You know, you can buy reams of plasticine um, in the toy store for a few pounds, and it'll last you a very, very long time indeed. So we're now up to the stage where basically, you know, we've filled the miniature in, and we're actually now going to need to start thinking about the next steps which is how am I going to paint this guy so when you're actually painting the mini it's actually quite difficult to paint a mini when you hold it like this and you're painting it like that well, so what you need is to mount it on something most easy way to do that is you can buy yourself a special tool like a gripper tool like this and these are about three or four pounds and they're actually CAD drawings as well, if you've got a 3D printer you can actually 3D print these things yourself. And these are really neat, I really like them. And um, for my show minis, not that I do very many these days, show minis then something like this is good, but to be honest this is three or four pounds. I can get a similar capability by an old pill bottle and some blue tack, where I can basically put some blue tack on the top, get some blue tack. And this isn't very expensive, you can find this in most of your bargain stores for about a pound. And you stick your mini on top of your pillbox and that gives you something nice to rotate around. In fact on some pillboxes where you can actually move the lid it's even better so you can just rotate it around as you paint. It gives you something nice and firm to grip on. And you can see that, you know, Blue Tack does a pretty good job at, at keeping that miniature there. It's not going to come off anytime soon. So that's a really, really good way to paint your minis. So you will be looking for pillboxes. So don't throw them away, keep them. Get yourself some blue tack as well. Other things you need to think about as well now, when you've mounted this, is you're now actually going to start to need to think about, uh, well, I probably am going to paint this miniature now. So in order to paint your miniature, you are going to need some receptacles for water. Nothing fancy, just a couple of glass jars will do the job just fine. It's a good idea to have two, one for paint, one for inks, washes, whatever they call them these days. Just to keep the two separate um, because paint has particles in it and you don't want to contaminate the inks when you actually come to use it. And it's a good idea as well when you are painting, and I'll mention this in my next video too, is change your water often and also if you're batch painting which I'm going to describe in some detail change your waters after each colour too. Another thing as well you're going to want to put together is a palette of some kind so a bit of plastic for a dry palette is a good idea because your dry palettes are actually sometimes quite useful. Everybody will talk to you um, when you first start miniature painting, the same thing, you paint, then you paint, then you paint, they ain't wrong. Um, it is the mantra. You put some paint from your bottle onto the palette with some water. Usually the same amount of water as you put on paint. 
never go from the pot with your brush to the miniature because the paint will be too thick and you will ruin the brush. I've made the mistakes so you don't have to. Just remember that. So, we've talked about the water, we've talked about a dry palette. What about what everybody talks about, which is a wet palette? So you're going to need an ice cream tub or a piece of topware. And then you're going to need to get good quality paper towel, like a bounty. Don't get the cheap stuff. It doesn't work so well. Cut it out, put it in here, wet it, and then put like a sheet of tracing paper over the top. Or, and basically that gives you a wet palette. You put your paint on. Put the lid on, the paint lasts for absolutely ages, so it'll save you a bunch of paint. It'll be the right consistency, right colour if you blend it. Oh, it just massively improves your ability to paint a miniature if you use a wet palette. And there are great videos about how you create one, particularly good one by um, Adam Smasher on Tabletop Minions. So go and have, check out his video, a really good way um, to describe how you should put together a wet palette. You don't have to use a top wet box, you can actually use a metal tin. This is a, a metal one as well. So, you know, you can use top wet metal. And also, you know, if you want to be a bit more professional, you can actually just buy the stuff from an art supply store. So this is basically wet palette cartridge paper and the top. And you can see it's basically just like a tracing paper or a boost proof paper. Um, and this is just thick cartridge paper so there's not an awful lot to it folks you know so you can buy the real thing if you want to and just put that into your Tupperware dish and these will generally cost you about 10 sheets I think will probably cost you three or four pounds or something like that but to be honest you can make do with paper towel and um, tracing paper or a base sheet just as well it'll work just fine but if you want to go super professional you can buy the real thing Now we need to think about, well I'm going to actually paint this guy, what brushes do I actually need? So most starter kits will give you a small brush when you start. So if you buy like a paint starter kit, often they'll give you a brush. And it will be typically, in fact this actually was from this paint starter kit I think, typically it will be a triple zero like this. And that, from a painting perspective, will do you really well it can do just about everything when it comes to actually painting what it can't do well though is prime and dry brush you really need specific brushes to do that kind of thing because that takes a lot out of your brush you really want a bigger brush when you do a prime and you really want a flat brush when you do a dry brush because it gives you a bit more control now this kind of brush, like this, a triple zero, is going to be cheaper for you to go to an art supply store. You can buy groups of them in the likes of Walmart as well, where there'll be a triple zero in there. And actually, to be honest, they really aren't that bad, so don't be scared about buying that. And to be honest, when you first start, you're probably going to destroy the brushes pretty quickly anyway. So it's a good idea to start with inexpensive brushes. But even like a, an army painter kind of brush, this sort of size, I think, is only about three or four pounds. So you're not going to be breaking the bank just buying a named brand one. The other types of brushes I mentioned that you're probably going to need is something to do the priming with, something this sort of size, and something to do dry brushing with. A flat brush is really ideal for, for dry brushing. Now, you could go out and buy like you know a, a branded version of both of these if you want, or you could just go back to your bargain store and basically look for some brushes. And if you look at his some brushes I bought in the bargain store for £2. You can see there's a bunch of them here. These are really ideal for priming and ideal for dry brushing. And also, you know, you don't really give two monkeys about them. So if they don't last forever, who cares? You're going to spend £2 on them. But actually, you'll find actually probably that these will last you quite a long time. The only thing is about these kind of cheap brushes is you will find you will lose bristles every now and then, which will be a bit of a pain for you to get off. But for the basics of priming and a dry brush, you get all these brushes, so you can actually even start using them for specific things because you've got so many of them, even specific colours. So it's actually a really good idea to pick up something like this, two pound, and it'll last you your miniature painting life, more, more than likely. So, 
So that's it for today. Or is it? No, it's not. I've actually forgotten something. There is one more thing that you're going to want to have. So you've constructed your miniature, you've stuck it together, you've filled in the gaps, you've primed it, you've painted it, you need to do the base. Now typically what you need to do with the base is you can do all kinds of fancy things these days. Everybody puts bits of rocks on there with cork and all this kind of stuff. But if you just want to keep it nice and simple and at least demonstrate you've made some effort to base it, then you're going to need some baking powder or some sand. So in my case, this is sand from my hometown. I've had this for 30 years. It was full to the top at one time so you can see it actually lasts a very 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 long time indeed because I probably painted a thousand or something miniatures with the sand that I had in this and basically you paint the base of your mini dip it in the sand little there shake it all off let it dry and then brush off the excess on the feet and on the edges and and then paint back over the top of the sand and you've got yourself a reasonable base. You can use the same technique with baking powder as well. I know a lot of people talk about using baking powder versus sand because sand basically the grains are too coarse and they're not really in scale whereas baking powder is and that's probably true. Baking powder does seem to give you nice results but you can use the same technique with baking powder as well and you can put baking powder in a little Tupperware dish like this and it will last you a long time. So there we go. Those are the things that you're going to need. So probably your outlay here in order to get all the things you actually need. Let's sort of give you some idea of what you're actually going to need to spend. So we're going to need to spend about £3 on a pair of snips. £3 on a knife. Perhaps three or four pounds on nail files, pound or so on blue tack, pound or so on that. Not going to pay anything for a wet palette. We're then going to move on to our brushes. So I'm going to pay three or four pounds for a brush and everything else we've kind of sort of begged, steal or borrowed. So for less than £20, you kind of got everything you're really going to need for the foreseeable future to put this stuff together. And I might also add that it's a very wise idea to invest in some paper towels as well, because you will be making a mess. Some old tea towels are a really good idea as well to cover yourself as you're painting is there a good way to actually help take brush off paint if you put too much on and things like that and also retire some clothes and wear those clothes when you paint you will knock paint over and cover yourself in paint your cat will jump up onto your painting table and cover you in paint and you will stab yourself with your exacto knife and scream blue murder as blood spurts everywhere which is what happened to me one time. And remember, I've made the mistakes, so you don't have to. But do wear appropriate painting clothing when you actually paint your minis. You don't want to ruin your nice dress or your nice suit. So that's it for today, folks. I will do another episode where we'll actually talk about how we actually go about thinking on painting these guys and also what miniatures should you actually paint when you first start because folks it should not be miniatures that you are emotionally attached to newsflash it should be miniatures that you don't really like and never have any intention of playing because then you can screw them up quite happily and you won't really care so that will be the next episode folks if you like this thank you very much please subscribe like comment that would be great i'm mr k the mediocre painter signing off